Hello, Anatomy students. In this podcast, I'm going to review the muscles that move the forearm, hand, and fingers. This is the biceps brachii. This muscle is located on the anterior upper arm, and biceps means it has two heads. This is the long head, and this is the short head. If we remove the deltoid muscle, we can see its origin points located here on the scapula. In fact, the short head inserts onto the coracoid process of the scapula. The biceps brachii inserts onto the radial tuberosity of the radius. The actions of the biceps brachii include flexing the forearm at the elbow, weakly flexing the arm at the shoulder, as well as supination of the forearm. When we turn the arm from anterior to posterior, we can see the triceps brachii, which is a three-headed muscle located on the posterior upper arm. Its origin is on the scapula, and it inserts on the ulna at the olecranon process here at the elbow. The actions of the triceps brachii are opposite to the biceps brachii. It extends the forearm at the elbow and extends the arm at the shoulder. In between the anterior biceps brachii and posterior triceps brachii is the brachialis, which is seen laterally here on the R model. Think of this as sort of like the meat within the biceps triceps sandwich. If those muscles were the bread, the brachialis would be the meat in the middle. Its origin is on the humerus, and it inserts onto the ulna. Its action is similar to the biceps brachii in that it flexes the forearm at the elbow. When we rotate the arm again from the anterior biceps brachii back to the posterior triceps brachii, we can look towards the elbow and see a thin strap-like muscle wrapping around the elbow region. This is called the anconius. Its origin is on the humerus and it inserts onto the ulna near the olecranon process. Like the triceps brachii, the anconius is an extensor muscle. It extends the forearm at the elbow and it also helps stabilize the elbow joint. The brachioradialis is the large fleshy muscle on the lateral side of the forearm, and its name is a reference to its origin and insertion points. Its origin is on the humerus, and it inserts onto the styloid process of the radius. You know, the radius is on the lateral side of the forearm, the same side as the thumb. The brachioradialis is a forearm flexor muscle. It flexes the forearm at the elbow. This is the pronator teres. This muscle stands out from the other forearm flexors in its orientation, where it is found in an oblique diagonal orientation here close to the elbow. Its origin is on the humerus and ulna, and it inserts more laterally onto the radius. The pronator teres is named partly after its action of pronating the forearm. Pronation is a rotational movement that brings the palm from anterior to a posterior position. Imagine if you had a cup of soup in your hand and you're pouring the soup 
think pronation, poor nation, as a way to remember that specific action. Like the other muscles around it, the pronator teres also does some weak flexion of the forearm at the elbow. This is the flexor carpi radialis. And you can see how a lot of the forearm flexor muscles, the muscle belly ends about halfway along the forearm, and then it becomes all tendon. This muscle is named after its action and location, where carpi refers to the carpals and metacarpals of the wrist and palm. Radialis refers to its location along the radius bone here on the lateral forearm. And flexor describes its action. Its origin is on the humerus, and it inserts onto metacarpals 2 and 3. Its actions include flexion and abduction of the hand at the wrist. This is the palmaris longus. This is the small belly of the muscle, and its long tendon, which ends at the palm. That's where the muscle gets its name, palmaris longus, with its long tendon. Its origin is on the humerus, and we can follow the long tendon down the forearm to its insertion point, here on the palmar aponeurosis, which is a flat membrane-like tendon on the palm. And that's a great way to recognize this muscle. Just follow the long tendon down to the palm, and you know you have the palmaris longus. This muscle works to weakly flex the hand at the wrist. When we turn the forearm, showing the medial side, the ulnar side, we can see our next muscle, which is the flexor carpi ulnaris. And it's named in a similar fashion as the flexor carpi radialis. It's a flexor muscle in action. The carpals and the metacarpals are where carpi comes from. And it's on the ulnar side of the forearm, the medial side. Its origin is on the humerus, and it inserts onto the carpals, specifically the pisiform and the hamate, as well as metacarpal 5. Its actions include flexion and adduction of the hand at the wrist. Our next muscle is located right next to the brachioradialis, just posterior to it. This is the extensor carpi radialis longus. has a long tendon that we can follow down the forearm to the hand. And like the flexor carpi radialis and flexor carpi ulnaris, the extensor carpi radialis longus is named after its action and location. It's an extensor muscle. It inserts onto the wrist at the carpals and metacarpals of the hand. It's on the radius side of the forearm, which is more of the lateral posterior orientation, and it has that long tendon. Its origin is on the humerus, and it inserts onto metacarpal two. This muscle works to extend the hand at the wrist, as well as abduct the hand at the wrist. This is the extensor digitorum, and this is a posterior muscle of the forearm, and it's named after its action of extension, as well as its insertion points onto the digits, the fingers of the hand. Its origin is on the humerus, and it inserts onto the distal phalanges, if we follow these tendons down to digits 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
this is a great way to recognize the muscle. We can see those prominent tendons on the digits and we can follow them back to the belly of the muscle. The actions of the extensor digitorum are to extend the fingers and the hand at the wrist.